This is section 5.2, the definite integral, content objective 3, which is to compute a definite integral directly using your calculator. When you're done, I want you to be able to reiterate what the four calculator features that are allowed on the AP exam are. So in order to compute definite integrals on your TI-89 calculator, you're going to access this integral symbol, and it is located under second 7. So on your calculator, you can see right above the number 7, you have this integral symbol. So if we want to put this into the calculator, we have to tell it the integrand, we have to tell it the letter we are integrating with respect to, and we have to tell it the lower and upper limits. So we access this with second 7, then we enter the integrand, comma, the variable of integration, comma, the lower limit, comma, the upper limit, and then we hit enter. On the TI-83s, it works similarly, except instead of using this second 7 for the integral symbol, we're going to go get the functions integral, which is located under math 9. Otherwise, the syntax is the same. So with example 1, we want to evaluate the integral from 4 to 7 of x squared over 3x minus 6 with respect to x. So we'll turn on our calculator. We will input second 7. Then we'll have an x squared divided by 3x minus 6. We've now put in the integrand, so we have to tell the calculator what variable we're integrating with respect to, which is x. Then we need to tell it the lower limit, and then we need to tell it the upper limit. Hit diamond enter, and we end up with 8.721. Notice with this answer, I can either choose to truncate to 8.721, or I can round up to 8.722. Either one would be correct on the AP. With example 1, part B, we again will access that integral symbol. Then we'll access the log natural. Now we need an absolute value, which is stored in our catalog. If you aren't at this screen already, you can just hit A, and it'll pop you up to the A's. We'll select absolute value of, now in this case, notice that we have an A, but this is also a dummy variable, so we can choose any letter we want. I will type it in as is, but on your homework or on your web exams, you could certainly do X's if you chose, and you would get the same answer. So I'll do alpha A squared minus 7. I'm going to close the absolute value. I'm going to close the log natural. Then I'm going to tell the calculator that my variable of integration is an A, and then I'll put the lower and the upper limits. Close the integral command and hit diamond enter. Our answer in this case is 93.061 or 93.062, depending on whether you truncate or round up. With example 1, part C, several things can happen depending on how you use your calculator. If you enter it in, with the second 7, put in your integrand, tell it the variable and the upper and lower limits, lower and upper, I should say, in that order, and hit diamond enter. If your calculator is like mine, it's going to hang for a while. So I tried it on this calculator, and it was busy for 10 minutes. So I've interrupted that and come back here, and I want to talk about why this should be busy. Because when it's busy for that long and it tells you you get questionable accuracy, that's usually an indicator that there's something funky going on with the integral itself. If I skip the diamond and just put plain enter, we see that the value is undefined. So we need to think about what is happening with the integrand on this interval that is going to make it difficult to get an answer. And hopefully you'll see that negative 2 is the location of a vertical asymptote, and we're trying to straddle it. We're trying to go from negative 3 past that vertical asymptote all the way to 0, and we cannot do that. Remember, definite integrals are only defined if there are finite countable bounded discontinuities, and this discontinuity at negative 2 is not bounded. So it makes sense that our calculator is going to work really hard to try and get something for this, and it's not going to work. So we end up with an undefined result, and this does not exist.
With example 2, we want to find the area enclosed between the x-axis and this graph that is shown to us right here. So looking at it right now, we can see that the accumulation or the integral will actually give us a negative value here and then it will give, it a, give us a positive. So if we want to get the area, which is the positive accumulation, then we need to think about this portion of the graph coming up above. In other words, we need to take the absolute value of this piece or we need to take the opposite of this negative accumulation in order to compute the area. So we can write down that the area will be the accumulation from negative 2 to 1 and in order to make this become a positive accumulation we should take the absolute value of the function. So if I put this into the calculator I should be able to find my area. So we'll do second integral of the absolute value of x cubed times e to the x. Close the absolute value. Tell the calculator we want to integrate with respect to x from negative 2 to 1. Close it off. Diamond enter. So our area is 1.420 or 1.421. So what we found in this objective is that we get yet another skill that we can do on our calculators and this is the fourth and final one that is an allowed feature. So just to recap, the four allowed features that you can use a graphing calculator for on the AP exam are you can graph something in an appropriate window, you can solve an equation and typically you'll solve graphically as opposed to doing it on your home screen because sometimes with the home screen you'll get that warning about more solutions and you need to heed it. The third thing that you can do is take the derivative at a point and the fourth thing is you can compute a definite integral.